Let's look at five different concepts for minimalist sports posters that you can try out in your next design. So I've seen a lot of great minimalist designs. They typically have some combination of a player cutout in front and then something going on behind the cutout. We're gonna be looking at adding an element that fills some of this middle space. First thing we can do is add another bigger cutout. So let's go into our folder and drag in another image of Victor Luo, who is our subject for today. And then once you have that cutout where you want it, go ahead and click the mask icon in the bottom right. And then going to our gradient tool, G is the shortcut. We're gonna take a black to transparent gradient, which should be your default. And we're just gonna click and drag up to fade it out from a certain point. And I'm gonna make this a pretty gradual fade. You can then adjust these points after you've let go. And in your design, you might want this cut out full color. You might wanna fade it out a bit. You can adjust the opacity just to make it a little bit more in the background. You can also add on a gradient map. That's something I like to do. So if you go down to your adjustment layers, go to gradient map, you can then clip this gradient map so it's just affecting this cutout layer, holding option, hover in the space between layers and click. And then we can put on a simple black to white gradient. You can even adjust this black to be more of like a light gray if you want this like even more faded look. And we can bring these sliders closer together to get some more contrast, get those whites up. Instead of gray, we could also do a team color, blue for Madison. Maybe you like that style and you can always adjust these sliders to be more or less contrasty and a more or less faded look. So onto the second concept, which is using a shape to mask out a photo in the background. Let's group this into a folder just so we can revisit it later. We'll call this faded cutout. Let's hide that layer for now and make a new layer where we're just gonna draw out a very simple shape. It could be a circle, it could be a rectangle. We'll go with a rectangle for this first example. Something roughly around here. And then I'm gonna center this by going Command A to select the whole screen. And then with your Move tool, you can click up at the top to center justify. Next, we're gonna drag in a photo. So let's take this image of Victor getting interviewed after a game. Same thing as before, we're gonna use a clipping mask. So you can hold Option, hover in this space, and then clip it to the layer below it. So now we only have this photo affecting the area of this shape. So maybe we wanna move this a little higher and you can expand the shape upward if we just hit Command T to transform. You can adjust it so we get his whole head in the frame. And then with any of these effects, you have the same color treatment options available to you. So we can even grab our gradient map from our faded cutout. I'm just holding option, clicking and dragging to duplicate the layer and move it upward. We can now clip this to our photo and we have that same blue and white gradient as before. And again, if we wanna go into our gradient map, swap this blue out for something like a light gray. I think this can also serve as a pretty clean look. We can also add some effects to this rectangle. Like if we wanted to give it a drop shadow, just go down to your effects, go to drop shadow, and then, you know, play with the size opacity. If you're going for more depth in your design, this is a good way to do it. And you can really use any shape for this. Like if we wanted to swap this rectangle out for a circle, I would just make a new layer. We don't want this one clipped, so let's go to our ellipse tool and drag out a circle. And again, we're gonna center this and then we'll clip the photo and the gradient map to this new circle there. And then, you know, just adjust the photo accordingly. And if you want to take this effect a step further, you could also have parts of this player like popping out of the shape. So to do that, all you gotta do is duplicate your photo layer with Command J. And then we're gonna drag this up to the top, reclip our mask as well. If you go to your quick selection tool, W is a shortcut, you can quickly select just his head for example. And we can just do a rough selection here so you get the idea, but you are encouraged to take more time with yours. Hit the mask icon. We've now got the head popping out. Of course, we want the same gradient filter on it. So just duplicated that gradient map and then clipped it to the head layer as well. So now you have this image of Victor in the background popping out of the shape that we've put him in. Next up, we're gonna look at text. So let's hide these shape layers and make a new layer. Hit T for your type tool. And let's pick the, the radicals blue to start. We're just gonna type out the number 10. And this is a real simple but effective way to make a poster design. Just big player number, player cutout in front. And you can size these however makes sense to you. You can move the player cutout over so he fits more like in the gap between the numbers that might look better. You can also change the solid fill to just a stroke fill if you wanna go to your effects 
add a stroke and we'll do inside position, switching the color to the same radicals blue, something like a two pixel stroke. It's probably subtle enough. Could even do a soft gradient on the stroke to reflect some of these lighting conditions I've created in the background. So like the ground is just slightly darker than the white up at the top of the canvas. So if we wanted to reflect that in the lighting of this number, we can go into the stroke and switch it to gradient fill type and then switching these out for the radicals blue going up to, I mean, we'll, we'll pick the radicals blue to start, but then just pick like a, a brighter, lighter color. So now you have like this subtle fade. Another thing you can do with big text is fill it with a certain texture or even with a photo. So we can bring this fill back up to 100. We can take the stroke off. Let's say we wanted uh, another photo in there. We could use this Luo Photo 2 I have saved. And let's see how this looks. I'm just gonna clip it. Again, holding Option, clicking in the space between layers. And I just wanna make it so we can see his face pretty clearly in the number. And then if we switch this blend mode to something like Luminosity, we can then fade out the opacity. And you can play around with these different Blend modes, obviously. Overlay is a good one. Multiply, if we crank this back up and let's change the image adjustments to black and white. That kind of gives a, a cool, darker look to the whole thing. And then same idea as that gradient lighting we did for the stroke, you could add some like overall brightness on top of this number. So if we just group the 10 and the photo into a folder. And then we'll go to our adjustment layers and add an exposure layer. You could also add curves, levels. I'm again clipping this to the 10 and then you can boost the exposure to brighten it up. Command I to hide this mask. And then if you take a white brush, you can brush on some subtle lighting, which I feel like just makes it a little bit more interesting. Again, reflecting that's similar lighting that we see in the background. Other text you can play with. If you didn't want to do the player number, you could always do the player last name. So we could type out Luo, go back to our blue and blow it up pretty big. I feel like generally more condensed, like taller fonts, as long as they're bold, work pretty well. You can also do repeating text if you wanted to just copy this down a few times. We'll bring the line spacing a little closer together, shrink the whole thing. Luo is maybe not a great example because it's such a short name. This would look better with a longer word, like if we did radicals instead. Basically any interesting typography treatment you can come up with is gonna look pretty good just behind your main subject. We can even change the color of one of these to the Madison yellow. Maybe you wanna add a text warp, go up to T, Hit that T with the arc next to it. And then we could do something weird like wave. I have a whole video on wavy text effects you can play with. So we've got all sorts of text options. Next up, we're gonna look at logos as the primary background element. And this could work with just a single logo or like a matchup. Like if this was a game day graphic or some featured matchup, you could have two logos with like a big versus sign between them. We'll just look at the one layout for today. We'll drag in this radicals our logo. This alone, I feel like is a pretty clean, easy look to pull off. But like the text, we can throw on some different effects to make this a little bit more interesting. Starting with that same exposure, I'm just gonna copy this existing exposure layer. And then maybe we don't want it that extreme, but I do like the masking, just kind of subtly in the top right. We can make the logo 3D if we want. If you go to your logo, go to your effects, add a bevel and emboss effect. You can play with these settings and it's just gonna make your logo appear 3D with these like darker or lighter edges. You can take that a step further if you want to add a drop shadow, you can turn on drop shadow. Maybe this one we like we take more distance on so it's like more coming off the page. You could also add a shadow below the logo. If we turn off the drop shadow, make a new layer underneath. Super simple shadow. We could just set our brush hardness to zero, click once for a black dot and then sizing it down with transform. Very basic shadow, just for the purposes of this design. But you get the idea, something to make the logo feel like it's hovering in the space behind our cutout. And you can also play around with the filters really with any of these effects as well. So if we take off that shadow, we'll take off the bevel and emboss. Let's just go up and try out a blur. You could do a Gaussian blur, it's kind of very basic, really separates the logo from the main subject in the foreground. This kind of simulates the idea that we were like taking a photo of this player and then this was just in the background. You can also do a more interesting blur if you want to do a radial blur, that's always a good option. You can set this to 10 or something or even 
20 just so we can see the effect a bit more but just kind of kind of like zoom it out from the center of the design another thing that might be interesting is using a wave effect on it if you go to filter distort wave i encourage you to just play around with all these filters there's so many cool things in here that i like have no idea about that i haven't tried and then a few things that i have tried that i like so there's this kind of broken up logo you can get from a wave filter. It's a pretty cool look. Now it's also worth experimenting with like other logo variations. There's this one Radicals logo I did for a t-shirt recently that is just like a stroked outline version, which I feel like would look really cool in this poster concept. Again, just kind of giving this like stroked minimalist vibe to the whole thing like we saw earlier with the number 10. And the last thing I'll mention with logos is that you could use the logo as a shape to mask out a photo, kind of like combining two of these ideas. So if we have our logo layer, we can take one of our images from before and we'll drag this over the top and then we'll clip this to a Radicals logo, holding Option, hovering in the space and then clicking. Oh, and this is kind of cool because the, the logo has some like built-in transparency. This is an option if you want to, again, pop out the image, we could do that same effect where we select some of his head pop it out over the top. I would say logos and text give you the most freedom with any of these concepts. The last thing we're gonna look at is just doing a full faded image in the background, basically just adding a texture to the background. Let's take that same photo from before, this interview shot, we'll blow it up. And like we did initially with that first cutout, let's take a gradient, put a mask on it, and then just draw up a soft black gradient. So now we have like a designated floor for our main cutout to be standing on. And then this is simply just like the wallpaper in the background. And again, you can fade out the opacity. Honestly, it's kind of interesting with a full color look. I feel like I generally don't do full color, super faded images. Like I would set this to black and white, or you could set this to luminosity. So it takes on the color of the background. Same color options as we've been talking about this whole video. You can drag a gradient map over the top. Again, clip it and change this back to normal, increase the opacity, and then go into the gradient map. Let's pick like the radicals blue. I feel like a blue and white concept is pretty good. And maybe you want it more faded, you can go back into the gradient, adjust it as needed, or just fade out the opacity of the entire image. That's gonna do it for this video. I was just designing the other night and couldn't really decide how I wanted to structure a design. So I like tried a bunch of different things, tried a shape mask, tried a logo in the background. Gave me this idea to make a video on just like all the possible things, not all the possible things, but a good chunk of things you can do with a minimalist design. I've done a few other minimalist designs in past videos. If you haven't seen them yet, I'll leave a couple links here. Thanks for watching, have fun playing around, and as always, let me know if you have any questions.